seven o'clock, so we can start. So we'll start with Annie, if you can read the, the preamble to the Constitution here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Today is Thursday, May 27th, 2021. It is the Lake Management Committee meeting. All meetings of the Lake Management Committee are recorded. Meeting notices pursuant to the Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Lake Management Committee will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation, participation by members of the public and or parties with the right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the office of the AG webpage at mass.gov. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted. The town will persevere to use conference call capabilities regularly for other parties to listen in and participate accordingly. If not possible, we will post on the town's website an audio recording as soon as possible after the meeting. Thank you. Okay, I'll take attendance. And let me just get my attendance sheet here. Okay, Norm. Yeah. Mike Coombs. Yes. Um, Mike DeBay. Yes. I'm here. Uh, Scotty. I'm here. Uh, Annie's here. Uh, Deb. Yes. Eric. Yes. Paul Murphy. Paul, you still on? Yes, I am. Okay. So we have a quorum. All righty. So we can go right to the minutes. Anybody have any comments on the minutes? No. Oh, Dick, this is Mike DeBay. I'll make a motion. We accept the minutes as written. Okay. And a second from somebody? I'll second it, Scotty. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain? Unanimous. Okay. And I have to run down the... Okay. Norm? Aye. Mike Coombs. Aye. Mike DeBay. Aye. Me. Aye. Scotty. Aye. Deb. Aye. Eric. Aye. And Paul. Aye. Okay. Affirmed. All righty. Uh, public comment. Is this where you want Michelle stuff or do you want it later? It will follow it right after that. So if there's no public comment, um, no, next is actually CONCOM and then uh, CRC. Okay. Uh, then we move to Norm yep. for CONCOM update. Uh, there was uh, one item on the Conservation Commission agenda that uh, pertains to the lake, and that was the request of 102 Lakeview Street. Uh, to allow to repair and replace parts of a retaining wall that has deteriorated over the years. Um, it will be replaced with a vinyl wall. And it was approved, uh, but they need to come back to the Conservation Commission on how they're going to take the old wall out of the property because it's a ah. much confined lot. Okay. And what number was that? 102 Lakeview. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Yeah, that was the only item on the agenda, but they also had discussed uh, the for the second meeting in a row that they wanted a joint meeting with the Lake Management Committee. Yeah. Uh, didn't get specific on what they wanted to discuss other than a few of the dock issues on both agendas. We're kind of losing you here and there, Norm. Uh, yeah, I do. We, we, Dennis and I have been, and and Gene, have been, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> sorry, have been bouncing some of the things back and forth. Uh, and we're, what we're trying to do is, before we have a joint meeting with DEP, is to get everybody to get all their ducks in line because we'll have representatives from uh, Lake Management, Conservation, and DEP um, at the joint probably going to be a, a Zoom meeting unless things change uh, over the next few weeks where we can have face-to-face. -face. 
Uh, I do know that Town Hall is being set up for additional video capabilities uh, that they don't have. They're planning on having the select board's office and the auditorium and the upstairs conference room all set up with video and audio. So uh, you could have some limited people in a meeting and then extend it outward via Zoom. You know, a lot of other flexible capabilities there. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and nothing else from CONCOM then? That was about it. Okay, CRC update. Okay, um, Michelle apologizes she had to be at another meeting. Uh, she wanted to remind folks, please, if you use Amazon, go for Amazon Smile and make CRC your designated beneficiary. It doesn't cost you anything. Right. The North Pond cleanup was very successful. I uh, got a lot of junk out of there. Um, there was a dumpster that was donated and uh, the gentleman actually wants to give money again next year to help out. So the 4th of July parade is on July 3rd, which is the nearest Saturday. Um, we uh, want to make sure that we announce the rules, you know, no water balloons, you know, go counterclockwise, do not pass each other, et cetera, et cetera. So we're setting that up. Um, the um, Jan Dudak, who some of you may know, uh, is part of the Water Rat Band. And he is talking about having a uh, beachfront band uh, event kind of like Mac did, like Mac, uh, on the June 12th at 5.30, and they're going to collect for CRC, which is very nice. So it'll be a boat in type of thing. Hmm. And uh, then uh, she also wanted me to remind you that the CRC annual memorial golf tournament is Saturday, September 25th. It's going to be at Edgewood. And we're looking not only for participants, at $100 per golfer, but um, hot dog and soda comes with the, at the turns and non-golfers can join for 35 bucks to get the dinner and then not the hot dog, but it's more than that. <laughs> uh, they're gonna be raffle prizes closest to the pin, longest drive, uh, closer to center line. And we're looking, as I said, we're looking for sponsors. Uh, for an admiral sponsors, it's 250 and it's a standalone sign on the green or the tea and recognition in the Westfield Evening News. Captain sponsor is 100. Standalone sign on the green or tea. Recognition in the Westfield Evening News. Lieutenant sponsor, 50 bucks. Shared sign on the green or tea. And uh, raffle prize sponsors. Uh, there'll be a recognition on the raffle flyer given to all golfers and dinner attendees. So if anybody's interested in that, please, uh, Contact uh, either Michelle or myself. I'm, I'm happy to get you signed up. You can also sign up on the website. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Dick. Dick, yeah. this is just a little more update on the cleanup. Uh, I was there for the entire event, and I told everybody that I was there representing LMC as the one LMC volunteer that showed up <laughs> in any event. In any event, uh, it was a shame because the the, uh, our boat didn't show up as I hoped it would. And we waited 45 minutes for a, for a, a boat, which was, uh, I'm gonna assume donated by Saunders. So the boat comes, we did take a lot of the wood debris out down into the lake. We took out big metal cylinders that were holding up some kind of a dock mechanism. We took a bunch of stuff out of there, probably legitimate 10 trips or better back and forth across the lake with all kinds of wood debris and what have you. So it was, it was, make no mistake, it was a success. When we got done, you could see next to nothing down in the water. Wow, awesome. And Dennis Clark was also there uh, how taking much, pictures. How much uh, debris was in the, in the roll off? I don't know, I never looked in the roll off because oh. the roll off was at the top of the hill. And, and, and I got, got in, you know, pulling a lot of stuff onto the boat and then ended up driving the boat part of the time. But I said, I, at my age, I'm not hauling stuff up and down that hill. No, no. <laughs> so, 
All right. It's a pretty, pretty good hill. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, so moving back to our agenda, the first one is not a, sl a sheet in there, but I have a question for everybody. For 141 Congamon Road, Krabby Joe's, it stays on our list of, of locations. And does anybody know anything more going on there? Um, we're just trying to keep an eye on it because it's mm. been vacant for so long and there's been all kinds of rumors flying. And anybody have any facts? Not facts. Yeah, no. I've, I've, seen, go ahead, I've heard, I'm gonna say, I've heard the story that Ken Eggleston who lives on Mountain Road, who I do know personally and through business as he's a former restaurant guy, among other things, he owned, he owned that restaurant years ago, uh, right in the center of Heating Hills, where you had like a, uh, there's a gymnasium right there to the right. Or if you're going towards, going towards Agamemnon, you, you take a left. at the Alexander's. Right, it was, it was Alexander's. Right the right. Alexander's, right? Alexander's, right? Yes, Alexander's. Yeah. He Alexander's. was involved with that for a while. He, he had some involvement there. I don't know all the fine print, although he wanted me to try to take something out of there. But regardless, mm. in any event, uh, I was told that he has won it, and the but I haven't talked to him personally. I've tried to catch up with him. Supposedly, just going to try to reopen it as a restaurant. Last I heard. All right. Anyway, if anybody hears anything, you know, to uh, please pass it along. Um, okay, five eighty three Forest Road. That's Number four through seven. That's uh, the two families there, actually, 583 and 585 Forest. And that's Montori and Kelly. And there's a, a right of way down to the water. I think it's 15 feet wide, if I'm not mistaken. It's narrow. And a uh, person in the back and has opted to put a dock in that spot and then boats on it and so you see the pictures that are in there where uh the boat the one boat was tied up sorta and it was actually just one rope holding it and then got loose the way you see it in the second picture and it was also uh infringing upon the the use of the dock for the for the people who actually own the waterfront adjacent to it uh that's 583 and 585 were being uh infringed upon, shall we say, by this uh, this dock that was put in the middle. Are those pictures from this year or last year? This year. Okay. And so CONCOM is still looking into that. They're working with Connecticut um, CONCOM and, you know, you can read what's what's in there, but they're, they're trying to come to some resolution about it. And it I'm also... Sorry, where is this exactly? What Very is close uh, to my house. Very close address? to my house. Yeah, what's the address? 583 and 585 Forest Road. So, so what you had, what you had there on the property, you had in, three in parcels. West Suffield, right? West Suffield. Yes. You had three houses or two cottages, one a real small cottage. That's now been made year round. Looks like a like a tiny house. Uh, the second one is slightly larger. Montori property down the gully, so to speak, or down the driveway to the left of those two houses. Uh, so the, the two houses in the back supposedly right away down to the lake, and then Kelly is on the uh, the side closer to the sandbar. And so Kelly's heartburn, I know because she's my housekeeper, uh, last year had heartburn with the fact that the boat uh, was extending over onto her property. They were putting all kinds of junk on the right of way uh, in the winter time, that type of thing. So it, it, I know there's a little bit of a mini battle going on down there. Yeah. And so we'll leave that. CONCOM is working it. Um, next one is 641 Forest Drive is Harpen. The, the flotilla keeps increasing over there. And as far as I know, the last conversation with Gene was they have no stickers for structures, no plan. Uh, they've added two buoys and there's several docks float. You know, there's a lot of structures there and nothing permitted so far. Uh, supposedly they're going to take care of that, but, you know, we just have to keep an eye on it. 
I believe Fred Harpin passed away in February. That's correct. That's correct. Oh. He passed away, so it's sad. I knew him well, uh, but you'd like to think that, uh, and I, unfortunately, his wife is not well either. Mm. But right. uh, maybe the kids that are out there, I say kids are probably, you know, late 30s, early 40s, maybe. You'd like to think that they would uh, straighten things up a bit. That's, I think, what uh, Dennis and, and Gene have been working with are the, are the kids. Mm. So anyway, moving along, um, sheets nine through 13, 101 Point Grove Road, Louis Lakeside. They, the first sheet there, you can see uh, the dock space that's for rent. That's sheet 10, rather. And that, that was advertising for slip rentals at uh, Louis Lakeside. And there are seven boats now moored Dick, is on, that an advertisement for this year again? Yes, that's this year's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we no longer call it the walk. What? Is it still called the walk or not? No, it's called Louis Lakeside. Interesting. Okay. So anyway, they are renting dock space, which is in violation of the planning board's special permit for the facility. And the code enforcement officer, you can see the cease and desist that was issued. And the associated fine is $300 per day per, per boat per day. And she has not picked up the certified letter yet. <laughs> and so. Um, Have I, the police chief deliver it to them. That's what I heard is going to happen. I so, did hear that rumor, by the way, that she was writing slips again. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, that's where it stands right now. And we're just waiting for that letter to be delivered. But at seven, you know, seven boats, that's an expensive daily fine. Yeah, when we, right, when the letter was written, there were four. Right. Now there are seven. Yeah. Um, and then, the, so then, unless there's any questions on that, we can move along. There was, there was one that's just a sheet of, sheet number 14. Just an information because it was kind of, um, we've had this discussion before about dock rights and there are there is no right to have a dock or a float or any structure in a great pond. There's no God given right to have it. One can obtain a chapter 91 license or a, a OPP. local permitting, a local permit if you meet the criteria, in all cases, if you meet the criteria. So there is no God-given right to have a, a dock or a float or, a, you know, mooring or a buoy on Congamon because it's a great pond. And, and Congamon is not unique, any great pond, okay? Um, the, the next one is 15, and that was an observation of Mike Coombs, and, and I'll echo that. Uh, it was brutal. Total insanity has been on the lakes. As we saw last year uh, with, with the COVID and with all the people that are boating that have no knowledge about boating, and it is totally insane. They're, going, they're blowing through the sandbar area, through the channels, through the towing people through uh, the tunnels, uh, towing people through the sandbar channel, and, and so on, all towing all the way through into North Pond. It was, it was pretty crazy out there on Sunday. The, the jet skis you were seeing, do we think these are rentals? I don't know. Uh, no, what I saw was the typical 15 or 20 jet skis brought in. Using the north ramp, I saw the fourth, uh, the fourth boat ramp they were using for unloading and unloading. Which they is illegal. A lot of people at Babs Beach and using Babs Beach as a station area. Wow. Be 30 or 40 people at Babs Beach and it's closed. If you went yeah, on I... Babs Road, there was probably 20 cars parked out on the road and they oh. just down. When, when uh, Linda and I were there last weekend, collecting for the um, savers, people kept coming in and, you know, we said, we're shutting the gate. You can't park here. 
There's no lifeguard. The town is not responsible. And they went anyway. It wasn't up to us to stop. No. And huh. so um, Linda did let Melissa know that that was happening. And we did not see a police car there at all. Mm. No. Well, it's good that she, you know, that uh, Melissa is now aware of it. So yeah, it was pretty crazy. I, by the I way, mean, they, they threw the, that sandbar. They went through there at full speed. If there was a kid in the water. Like, oh, yeah. They'd have run them down. Absolutely. Also, the, the two green boys at the sandbar. Yeah. There's no green boys at the sandbar. That's because uh, Rick has was it. Uh, injured his hands, his uh, finger severely. And the police, uh, Mike uh, Gerard, very graciously has taken up the, the task in, it, in his, on his own time and has been populating uh, buoys. And unfortunately, we lost quite a few uh, moorings and, and he's going to be setting some more moorings. He could use some guidance if anybody wants to ride along with him. But- uh, I guess you gotta do that, Dick. Mm, say again. When is she going to do that? Do you know? I don't know. I can ask him. If, if you let me know. What, what, is, what is the response from the chief of police as far as actually starting to patrol the lake? I can ask. All this money. I don't know where it goes. Is it used for the lake or patrols or what? I will ask that. I just took that as an action item. Okay. Uh, Dick, one, one thing on those ponies, you know, going through the sandbar. I, I mentioned this last year. I haven't been out once or in, but I haven't been out, you know, going around the lake yet. I really think that we should be choking these puppies in a little closer together. Yeah, they're, they're not in the they are not in the right place. They're actually we have GPS locations for all of them, but again, beggars can't be choosers. You know, right now we want to get them in, and then then we can push them around. Okay. Yep. Oh, well, somebody gives me a, a call. I'll okay. I'll get, I suppose I give Mike Gerard your, your number. Is that all right? Sure. Okay. I'll give him your cell so he can, and, and I'll uh, get, I'll give you his. And then when he calls, you know, who's calling. So you don't think it's a crank call. Uh, all right. So then okay, they, you, uh, one more, one more thing, Dick, there was a pawn, not a pontoon, a tripod, boat out there the other day easily looked over 30 i'm not sure it was a houseboat oh that was huge i don't know it's been out two weekends in a row now i'm not sure how big it is but it's actually actually i looked at that boat the other day it really it doesn't did. look to me that big no it's more like a 26 footer right in that area that, yeah 26 is too big so oh, no, it's 26, like, is, well, 26 is a limit it's class one if it's right. 20, 26 30. is the limit yep. yeah yeah and class one is the is the key, which will be on the registration. And it was an outboard, so the outboard. Yeah. Okay. Two boat, unfortunately. Dick, would you give my number to Mr. Gerard too? Sure. Let me just uh, make a note. Uh, Paul Murphy. All right. That's great. Do you think it's worth having the ramp attendants limit the amount of jet skiers on the lake? I'm not sure we can do that legally. Yeah, they I don't know. I was just thinking something to look into because I ended up working all day Sunday and I had to have at least done 12 jet skiers that day. And yeah. I was actually shocked because, you know, I, I try and put them in specific spaces and we were full of jet skiers. Mm-hmm. They do that on Hamden Ponds. Yeah. So we, um, I think, again, if the police get out there, a lot of the jet skiers will probably leave because they, they're just screaming, literally screaming back and forth. I just watched them tonight going right through the sandbar. Three of them. There was a, a green one, a red one, and a yellow one. And they were going through together, just blasting right through. Wow. So I hate wait. to say it, I've said it for years. We need an Arduini clone. Yeah. We really do. Not, nothing against the Southwick Police Department. They make a presence out there, but they're not trained like an environmental police officer is. Great. 
I think we have some guests that just joined, Dick. Say again? Uh, we have some guests who just joined. Michael Holland, I don't know if you can see the name there. Under. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Dick, how's it going, man? Hi. I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm a few minutes late, Dick. It was a little bit of a long day on video calls and my eyes can't handle anymore. I wonder how that can happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, Dick, I've got to work while I'm up here if I want to be able to pay my taxes. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's continue on. Um, we went through the bony insanity, the, uh, the buoy lights, 16 through 21. At the last meeting, we talked about those and the suggestion about the Amazon ones. The Amazon ones, while they're cheap, do not meet Coast Guard requirements at all. Um, they're steady light. They, they have to be flashing. There's specific flashing rates for different ones. And they're, they're also, it, it looks like if you sneezed on them, they'd come apart. Now, what has happened is since, you know, we had buoy lights, as many of you know that, for, for <clears throat> three or four years. And we gave up because they were getting smashed literally with baseball bats and pipes and things like that. And they're then they were 300 bucks a piece. Uh, now to do a whole setup, they're closer to 350. But the good news, the good news is, is that one, the low profile one, which is on page 18, that's new, meets all the Coast Guard requirements. It's a B345. Again, we're still talking about $320 a setup, but, and it's a big but, if you look at at the sheet 19, that adapter, that's made out of plastic. Mm -hmm. That's what, the, the two things would happen is they'd smash the, the light and and then smash the the holder for it, which is plastic. The, br the bracket. The bracket. The bracket. Yeah. So my recommendation there is if we go with <clears throat> anything, that those be made out of either stainless or aluminum welded you know, like eight inch, eight inch thick uh, aluminum. And then you'd have something that's, you know, a light that's a dome as opposed to a, a high target sitting on something that's rugged. And it, I liken it onto the same thing that happened with the lights that are on the, on the fishing pier. The first year we had them, they all got smashed. And what's on there now are stainless steel cages that I designed and we had built and those are significantly more uh, rugged. Bulletproof, I remember, bulletproof. Bulletproof. So, uh, and I, you know, that's the kind of approach I think that we have to take is it needs to be something that's literally bulletproof in order to survive. Because putting $300 on the plus on the top of each buoy uh, basically doubles the cost of a buoy. Yeah, we, we just be throwing away our money. Right. And and people are not supposed to be doing 40 miles an hour in the dark. Nope. I go back to my, how many times I've said that, is that if you were doing what you're supposed to be doing, which is 10 Dude. miles an hour maximum conditions right. permitting. So if there's no moonlight or anything, you can't see where you're going. Mm -hmm. Right. Basically, you're supposed to, it's headway speed for min, minimum speed required for steering. Right. And the way, 40 think, miles an hour that, is not minimum. <laughs> I think in, I think in Lake George, the speed limit is 25 at night. 25. Used to be. I don't know now. Used to be. Look how big the lake is. Yeah. yeah. In any case, the, the regulations here are really clear. It's headway yeah. speed in the dark. It's headway speed. So the minimum speed required for maneuvering and not to exceed 10 miles an hour. Yep. So, right. it, you know, this is, a, this is a problem every year, you know, middle of the night, you got people screaming down the lake. Literally. Hopefully, hopefully if, we can, if we can get a dock so that the police boat can be in place, hopefully we can start going after these people. But this is something, you know, this is something where, you know, somebody ought to get arrested for that. You know, that is, it's an incredibly dangerous thing to do. People have been killed, I think even on our lake, uh, yep. years ago this way. And this is, you know, this is not, 
oh, you know, we should give you a warning so you think about it next time. No, this is an incredibly dangerous thing to do. So, and, and I don't know if it applies. I do know it applies for OUI um, that if you're, if you're caught on the water operating under the influence, they can take your driver's license away. Right. I don't right. know if anything is similar for operating to endanger, which is basically if you're screaming at 40 miles an hour in the dark, you're operating to endanger. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if that ties over. I know uh, drunken boating does tie over to your, to your motor vehicle operator's license. I don't know if basically reckless boating does. Yeah. Uh, I, that, I have not that. Heard. that I have not heard. I'll have to find out about that. But in any case, this is something, you know, this is an ongoing safety problem. It's, it's a perennial safety problem. Yeah. It's been going on for years. Yep. That's what I say. It's perennial. Yep. Uh, and Roger Arnawini used to sit in the coves with his hat down on the deck and and just wait for them. Then you see the amp, amp, and the blue light come on. <laughs> well, at night, you don't even have to sit in the cove. Just sit anywhere you like. <laughs> right. And he, and he had no problem writing a ticket. Right. Yeah. So anyway, let's move on. Um, the, the next 22 and 23 were the results of the special town meeting and annual town meeting. And so we, our buoy, uh, our, our, our funding is for that, for the, for the buoys, you'll see, um, we did move for the $5,000 from, for, uh, clearing the canal was moved from operations to capital. It's not reflected on there, but it was approved by a unanimous vote of a, a warrant article. So that's where that 5,000 resides now, not in, um, uh, not in operations line item. So the advantage of that is, so everybody understands, that money doesn't go away. Year after year after year, it just stays there unless we use it. So it's it's an emergency fund that stays there as opposed to having to go uh, reappropriate re it every year. Okay. Uh, the next thing is a, is a question for everybody. The no smoking policy and signs uh we the inside of the building is has been no smoking because any any town building is no smoking inside um uh, the question we're posing is see if you look at sheet 25 and he's going back there what do people think about making it no smoking within 50 feet of the building entrance of uh, this is a, I got a question. This is Mike DeVay. I got a question before we go on to the subject here. Yeah. What's the problem we got? So we know what we're trying to solve. I'm not, I'm a non-smoker, so I could care one way or the other if you say no smoking. But well, when they what, smoke the on, on sitting at the front, in the front, in front of the building, at the entrance, the smoke goes into the building and it smells like a, an ashtray. And you wind up with the, the building smelling of smoke like somebody is smoking in it you're talking the ramp attendance building ramp attendant right. in the in front of the building well who's sitting there the ramp attendant yeah they're outside where, where they can see everything going on on the bench in front yeah and you're trying to stop them from smoking just so i understand yeah. fortunately I think we're wasting. I think we're wasting our time. This is not Hartford Hospital. <laughs> you know, should should it be where they are around the corner from it? Well, just it's think just in the perspective of someone that has to work in there and smell cigarettes while working there after somebody worked, you know, 15, 16 hours ago. It's really unfair to other ramp attendants that don't smoke. It does stink. Not, I'm not a smoker, and when I go over there to drop stuff off, it stinks. Well, are people smoking as they're coming through to hand the money in, or no? Or? It's ramp attendants. Sure. So, really, the reason why this is even being 
put up here is because if there's a visual sign for ramp attendance, uh, you know, they'll know, okay, like I really can't smoke right here. I, I tell people time and time again, at least walk away. I don't mind if you smoke cigarettes, you know, it, I understand you're addicted to the nicotine or whatever, but don't just stand in the doorway. Get away from the visitor center. Yeah. And it just doesn't seem to get through anyone's minds, unfortunately. So hopefully the signs work, <laughs> but I'm not sure if they will. Dick, the ramp attendants work for, for the, Annie, aren't you the supervisor of the ramp attendants? Yes. Yes. If they work for you, tell them, smoke someplace else. If they don't get it, get rid of them. We can't really afford to lose ramp attendants, unfortunately. I mean, unless you want to apply. (laughs) You couldn't pay enough to keep me down there. (laughs) (laughs) So. Hey, if you want to put a sign up, put a sign up. I don't think there's an issue. Yeah, I don't care. I don't smoke. I could care less. I know when we did it at work, we made little kiosks for people and we moved them away from all intakes. So and that's, it, how, that's how it wouldn't go into the buildings. And that's On how this topic, it, I'd like to mention also uh, if we can bring in some of those things, the smokers' poles, because I bring my daughter down there all the time just to walk around near the gazebo and whatnot. And the amount of times she's picked up cigarette butts thinking, oh, cool, yeah. look at this. It's colorful yeah, or whatever. Thing. It's, it's ridiculous. So something yeah, else can, to propose in the future. I can order a couple of those. And, and you know, I think maybe we'll, put, we'll start with one up there and maybe one down by the gazebo. Um, and, and maybe we can get people trained to throw their butts away in, in those and not toss them on the ground. Or in the lake, yes, in the lake too. Yeah. So are we talking? Are we talking about the ramp attendant smoking? Or are we talking about the people? Smoking? Yes. In one case, it's the ramp attendants. That's for the visitor center. And in the other case, it's in general, people flick butts all over the place out there. Right. Hey, Dan, I'm at the meeting. Okay. The town. The okay. town. Uh, what do you call it? Town hall has got okay. well, three or four. Of okay, those one towers one. around the the okay. grounds, right. at each entrance, basically. Oh, it's more than that, yeah, because there's more entrances than that. I mean, all, all I'm saying is, if you go to a hospital property like St. Francis or Hartford, they'll actually say to, to the employees and anybody else, you can't even smoke on the property. But I think you'd have a hard time. Uh, uh, getting people not to smoke coming in with a boat. That, like no, that's fishing. going. That's going. It, all we're talking about is up at the visitor center. Right. That's where this we're talking. We'll put a sign up there and say, "Please." I would say, "Please, no smoking within so many feet of the building." And you'll you'll get some people that that'll take that into consideration. I send them to a designated spot as often as I can. Uh, because I just don't appreciate selling the cigarette smoke. Uh, and, you know, there's only so much I can do or say without having to raise my voice or possibly lose a ramp attendant over smoking. <laughs> so I, you know, personally, I think we should put a sign up on it. We have right. them on the inside. Let's, I think we should have them on it. the outside. Let's just do it. <laughs> yeah, just do it. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Just right. put it up. Put All right. It up. That's the same as the 50 foot signs on the south ramp where there's no fishing as the guys are sitting underneath the Right, sea. right. The, and, and, and the north ramp too, by the way. They, <laughs> that's a state requirement. That's nothing to do with the town. Yeah. But it, but, it, but it would help though. It would help. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Uh, next one is the lake treatment was done on the 17th. Somewhere between 20 and 25 acres. I don't have the report yet. I had the, you you all got the uh, map originally and I don't have the invoice, so I don't know the exact acreage that was done. But uh, I did watch them. I actually took a video because I was down on White Street at the time and they came through and it was an airboat and that thing, they just went in and out, back and forth. They, they probably went over the same area four, maybe five times. So at any rate, um, we're, you know, I'm just waiting for an invoice to pay it, but I don't know if anybody's seen the results of it, if, if uh, seen any die off yet of uh, the Eurasian water milfoil. 
Yeah. And we already talked about the next one was the North Pond cleanup. So that we're and Dick, Dick, can we go back to this uh, the what? lake uh, treatment? Yeah. Um, on some social media, people were bitching. Well, how am I supposed to know that I'm not supposed to go in? Well, there's signs all over the place. Well, I'm supposed to look on lamp posts for signs. Oh, good. Lord. Also, also on the CRC website. Yeah. Yeah, and, and on I the said that, website. And I said, if you, you know, actually. Um, Ginny Graves said, you know, if you if you join CR or no, it was Sharon. If you join CRC, <laughs> you'll know all about things like this. <laughs> I like that. But oh my God, people are just bitching away. And I'm going, we're volunteers, folks. Mm. You know? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell else do you want us to do? <laughs> Fly over and drop leaflets? What? <laughs> yeah, and, and they still would not read them and then say, well, why didn't you tell me? Exactly. That's what people were saying. You know, I, I get so irritated. We, we, we're going to share something at the very end here with the, exactly the same problem. Uh, Tuesday was not a good day at work because that was when the, you know, the water ban was announced. Yeah. And it's like, it's something new. It's happened now three years in a row. <laughs> and it's, and it's the same process and you get the same questions from the same people. <laughs> it's you tough. Can't, you can't fix stupid. No, no. Anyway, so North Pond cleanup we already covered. Um, we also talked about the joint meeting, which you can read uh, at your leisure, 28 through 34. The areas that we have identified so far together between, between CONCOM and and uh, our lake management list were 129 North Lake Ave, 101 Point Grove Road. Uh, the first one was Despard. The second was Lu uh, Louis Lakeside. The third one is 109 North Lake, uh, which I think I put to bed, which is uh, Sh Steve Schmidt's place because he has a deeded access to the waterfront through Mark Tatro's land and it's in both deeds. So it's very clear and where it is, and it's 10 feet wide, and so on, you know, or, you know, the access down. Uh, 138 Bungalow is a new one. The house is actually at 115 North Lake Ave. They also own the lot that's 138 Bungalow. And uh, CONCOM rejected their application because they they didn't even draw what, what they have. <clears throat> what they have looks like many docks down there on the waterfront. So they were waiting for, they rejected it, sent it back to them. They still haven't gotten an, an application with all the data on it. And, and the last one that we had on the list was uh, Jenkins' uh, two places he has, one in the Connecticut Cove and one by the town beach. And I guess he started populating one of them with multiple boats. And so conservation refused to give him a permit too. Because he's, you know, it was a, a rental issue. Uh, you know, could I, the question I have, Dick, is, yeah, we keep saying, okay, he didn't give him permits, but you know what? The docks and boats are still in the water. So what, what, what's the issue? Oh, that's a good point. The, the one over near the town beach is in the water. There's boats on it. It was there last year. It never got permitted last year. No one did anything about it. And, you know, it's the same as behind, uh, what's it, what's the, um, over where Paul lives across the road. There's still like five or six docks over there. No one ever does anything. Well, no, nope, there's only three there this year. Yeah. So far. He cut that way back. No, they well, took uh, two, two other the ones out. There's one on the beach waiting to be picked. Hmm. Right. He's got three on two oh, properties. He had five on, on them before. But I will so note, I'll send a note to uh, CONCOM about that. Yeah, well, it's just it's just we keep addressing these issues year in and year out. Well, and that's why they wind Nothing's up Nothing's ever done. List, you know, because they don't get put to bed. Yeah. Okay. So, so most of our meetings are whining about dock issues that should be taken care of by the harbor and CONCOM, and, and they just don't do anything about it. 
So we need to, Jerry, if you and, and uh, Norm can carry that back also, that would help. Well, we do try. I mean, we went out last year a couple of times with the Harbor Master and yep. Norm, was, Norm was there as well. And we, we do try to identify who has stickers and who doesn't. It's not as easy as it might seem, but Jeannie does try to keep a pretty good list of who, oh, has, yeah. paid, she does. who, has, who has paid and who hasn't. So, But, but um, I think the message that I got from what, what uh, Mike was saying is even if they opt out of paying, mm -hmm. nothing happens. That's what I heard, right? Yeah. That's correct. The docks well, are still in, the boats are still on there. Yeah. What we can what we can do is you know determine those specific addresses and maybe address address it at this this uh, meeting that we're going to have together. It's probably best that way. Yeah, that we, we can air it all out and specifically yeah. look at those things. And of course, we'll be more aware of it at that point. So yeah, that's probably okay. how to how to handle that. So if there's any ones that any ones in particular that stick in your mind that or bother you, just you know make sure it's in writing somewhere and we'll. We'll definitely have it looked at. Yeah, if you want to email me with any any additional <laughs> particulars, because uh, I'm collecting them for lake management, and excuse me, and feeding it back to uh, Gene and Dennis. So have at it. You know my email address. A quick, a quick, well, quick, I, question, I, quick question for you, Dick. Okay. I I know I was you know in Florida. I was over the winter. I missed some of the earlier meetings. What's the deal this year on the application when I did send those things in? It doesn't ask anymore about the uh, boat lifts. No, they, they, there was a screw up on what went out. Okay. I, I will tell you, Dick, though, they did send me two boat lift stickers, though, because I had the year yes. before I had them, and they did yeah. send me two boat stick lifters stickers. <laughs> <laughs> they get them. Yep, they're on the lifts. I think okay. it's very easy. I'm not sure why everybody makes this more difficult. It right. Has this list. There's only X amount of houses. She knows who's paid and who hasn't paid. That's that doesn't seem like a difficult task to me. You know whether I paid or didn't pay. Just look up my address. So yeah. wait a minute. She does not how many know houses docks, she does not know all cases where there's a dock in and there was no request for, for a, a dock sticker. She just doesn't have that data. Right. Yeah. That's right. what we that's what we try to determine when we drive around looking at things and writing stuff down. And not everybody's complying, so it's kind of hard. You know, but we're we're trying. We're hoping that the police will help us too. Yeah. Um, you know, when they're out and you know, if they see something, take a photo of it, and you know, then we can determine who owns it. With with a photo, it helps. Mm -hmm. And an approximate location. Uh, anyway, kind of moving along. I also on that chapter 91, the question came up. It was, and you'll see in some of that stuff that was uh, Chrissy Hops is from Mass DEP uh, Waterways in uh, Boston. And the comment was made that there's no uh, chapter 91 license has been granted in Connecticut. And yes, they have. I found, I've got four of them. I have copies of all four. Um, they're valid chapter 91 licenses. They are for Connecticut property. And so the DEP is wrong. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and I've got, that's one of the things that I provided uh, back to CONCOM, the numbers, you'll see it in that, in that email, the numbers on the licenses. I have actual copies of each license. Uh, That's interesting. And and uh, there, there's also you'll see on sheet 31, a comment by uh, Chief Bishop about enforcing the requirements, and and he said he can enforce anything that is in the water. Basically, if it's in the water, if it's on the land, he cannot. So we're talking about Suffield, but if it's in the water, he can enforce the local permitting program and will. And he's had that discussion with the Suffield uh, people. Mm -hmm. So that's good news. Uh, the next I, uh, 35, sheet 35, is just an article. It was in the uh, Westfield News following our meeting on the 13th. You know, just a summary. 
and you can read it. it seemed to be pretty well written, mm -hmm. uh, kind of on target. And the uh, the next one, sheet thirty six, Crestview donated uh, four yards of loam, and the reason we needed the loam was, I don't know if you recall, we had there were uh, locust black locust trees behind the shed down there. And they were dropping large leaders uh, all winter long, all spring, and they're dangerous, plus dirty. And then there were two catalpas and a and a diseased maple over in the public parking area doing the same thing. So we had all those uh, diseased trees removed, and then we had all the stumps ground. So we needed to fill the holes where the stumps were, and Crestview donated, like I said, four yards of nice screened loam. And our really our cool. ramp attendants are are filling the holes and grading everything, and then we're going to seed it and make it look nice again. Nice. So and that's why the thank you letter to them. And town hall, the next one, thirty seven. Town hall is officially reopening on the first. Now that's not underscore <laughs> underlying the word not. Uh, they're not opening it up to in-person meetings, you know, like conservation or lake management or planning or anybody. They are, they're working on, that's kind of a next phase is what, to, where to go next. Uh, but for the time being, it's open to the public to come in. I believe they're going to still require masks when they come in, but they can move around town hall. Right now, they're restricted to the lobby where the clerk's uh, office is. That's the only place they can come in. And I did move, put a copy of the CRC golf tournament. That's uh, number 38. And the last one I just want to mention, which I will email. Um, oh, no. 39 and 40, before I forget, is White Street Outfall. The DPW repaired that. That was rutted out. And it looks nice. They did a nice job of, of cleaning out all the junk that was down there and re-rip wrapping it. And they've got another one they're going to do too. So uh, it was a thank you to them. And then the, the water ban is the last thing, which I did not have in. It was not out at the time I was assembling the package, but it was effective on May 26th. So... Uh, what it basically is, and you can look at it online on the town website, and the northern region is everything north of Granville Road, Depot Street, and South oh. Longyard Road, that line, that east-west line. And the south region is obviously what's below it. The east, the way they then took it is Mondays are the odd numbers in the northern region, Tuesday are even numbers in the northern region. Wednesday is odd in south, and Thursday is even in south. No watering on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Dick, does that affect pulling water from the lake? No. Okay. No. I can just say that what I'm doing is I water on the day that the uh, that's our day, just so that it doesn't stand out like a sore thumb. But mm -hmm. the other thing is, is that we, people, so many people water, irrigate their lawns at high noon. Worst thing you can do to a lawn. The, the water's not getting anywhere. You want to deep water. If you deep water once a week, you're far better off than sprinkling twice or three times a week. Because the deep water drives the roots down. So they get more moisture in the long term. If you just water quick, the roots stay at the top and then the grass dies. So, you know, if you're going to water, do it once and give it a good soaking, like the rain the other night. <laughs> Dick, I've also had I, I've also had somebody at one of these large golf courses tell me you're better off always irrigating early in the morning or late at night because Absolutely. during the daytime you're burning up. You're burning up the lawn instead of watering. That's why. That's what I just said. Was that? Yeah. It's the worst time is to if yep. you water from eleven to 
actually you you cannot water by the way in this van the the watering is only before 9 a.m and after 5 p.m which coincides with what you just said yeah and we can tell because the meters do not lie the water meters it's a uh, radio read system it's all, it comes right back to town hall and you can tell exactly when somebody's irrigating when they're not supposed to so they go out and check them Dick, I'm going to have to leave the meeting in about a minute because I've yeah. got another meeting I have to go to. Yeah. I think we're, we're all set unless there's something else anybody else has. I have uh, one item on the Conservation Commission that I forgot to mention. Yeah. Uh, it had to do with the lake evaluation prior to the treatment to determine where the treatment will take place. Yeah. And the question that came up, would it be better to do that evaluation in the fall when the weeds are at full growth? No. The reason is they need to they they need to see where it is at a particular stage and treat and the treatment is is critical. The timing of the treatment is critical for the weed growth. After when it's done they do another one in the fall to see what happened over the summer, but it's not the one that determines where you treat. The one done a uh, couple weeks before treatment is to determine where one treats. The yeah. one done in the fall is to find out whether any any residual problems. And I think that isn't even a choice because the the uh, I think the regulations stipulate you know, the, the amount of time between inspection and treatment. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so okay. solitude, solitude is following the law very carefully. Oh, okay. yeah. But the, the, the point being made was the fact that they, some of the people who live on the lake believe they have evasive plants in the water in front of their house, and it is, didn't get treated. Um, what we have found numerous times, and, and Eric, you can echo this, is when we go out and get the samples of the weeds, they're the good ones. They're, there's you're, there's water mill foil that's good water mill foil. And there's Eurasian right. water mill foil. They're right. different. Yeah, right. And, and basically, uh, indigenous weeds, we, we are not allowed, you're not allowed to chemically treat Right. indigenous weeds you can mechanically remove them that you're allowed to do right. but you're not allowed to to chemically treat indigenous weeds so you know whether or not if it, it is an invasive weed is something you know you have to have somebody come and look and determine is that an invasive or not and as dick says most of the time that we've gone and and gotten samples and had them checked the answer was sorry these are, whether they're good weeds or, or you don't, you like them or you don't like them or whatever, they're indigenous. And so you're not allowed to chemically treat those. Right. Unless they're invasive species, you can't treat right. them. Right. But you can mechanically remove them. Right. That you're allowed to do. Yeah. You can go out and pull them by hand. So that's okay. why it's done. I'm going to jump off. Sorry. I've got yeah. a business call I have to be on. All right. Anything else, anybody? What's the water temperature at the different lakes? Does anybody know? Don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know what it is now. Um, it warmed up a lot. Uh, yeah. I was actually in the water this weekend, last weekend, and it was it was definitely in the mid 60s. Yep. Yeah. It warmed up a lot. Yeah. I was in before, and it was colder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Eric. Okay. Bye. Anything Good. else? Dick, one question under new business. What's the beach road right away thing? What's that about? That was part of that that same thing um, with Jenkins. It's coupled oh. with that. Okay. That was yeah. Mr. Jenkins. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. Thanks. And all right. Anything else? I, I think oh. we should just make a blanket statement, Dick, that we're what we've seen in the last couple of weeks is, is very concerning on the speeds, uh, the flying through the buoys, uh, you know, just, just the abuse and the boats are so much bigger and faster. It's yeah. pretty scary out there. I, 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 it, it's going to take police patrols. Yeah, I agree. 
you know. All right. I see Michelle came in. Does she have a comment? Yeah, we're ready to we're ready to bail, Michelle. <laughs> 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 you timed that one just right. <laughs> great. I have great timing. Do we need a motion to adjourn if everybody's done? <laughs> we need a motion to adjourn. Michelle has to pick up the bar tab. <laughs> oh, that's rough. Michelle, I can fill you in. Okay, thank you. Sorry, sorry, folks. So I have a motion from somebody. Yeah, Scott. Who was that? That's Scotty. Yeah, Scott. Okay. Mike Coombs will second. Okay, Mike C. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. Okay, night all. Night. Good, Good night. night. Good night, everybody. See you.